Broncos quarterback Teddy Bridgewater was taken off the field on a spine board after this play earlier today. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and in this video we're gonna walk through what went on here with Teddy Bridgewater. Now, unfortunately we saw a similar episode just a couple of days ago with Donald Parham. In that video I talked more about the concussion side of things, what can happen after a brain injury like this, but in this video, I wanna walk through some of the protocols for what we do with an athlete who's down when we have concern about a spinal cord injury. One of the first things when we walk through these scenarios during the season and in preparation before the season starts is just being aware of how the athlete is positioned on the field or wherever they're playing. If it's a hockey rink and they're up against the boards, if they're up against the wall in the outfield, if they're on their back, if they're prone, meaning on their stomach here like Bridgewater, that's gonna influence how you're going to ultimately position, stabilize, and get them on the backboard if you need to do that. So an athlete prone, like Bridgewater is, makes things a little bit more challenging when you first get out there to manage this. Now, we see as the medical staff first gets out here on the field, the first person out is basically gonna take control of the cervical spine. This provider is essentially in charge of this whole encounter. They have the cervical spine, that's the most important part of this, and so they're leading the rest of the group with what to do. Now you can see when they get out there, he's not actually trying to roll Bridgewater. He's basically keeping Bridgewater down flat. He's got his hands on the back of Bridgewater's helmet to protect that spine as best as he can, but they're not immediately rolling him over. Number one thing they're doing here is first just seeing roughly, are they awake? Are they conscious? And then you're actually assessing for things like the airway, breathing, and circulation before you even worry about the neurologic status. So as the medical providers get out here, they're number one, assessing, are you awake? Are you alert? What's going on? They're gonna try at the same time to feel for a pulse if they can in the neck and make sure that it looks like the athlete's breathing. At this point, they've rolled Bridgewater over. Again, you can see the provider who's at the head still has his hands up underneath, stabilizing that spine as best as possible, even though the helmet's on. Now, an interesting thing here that I gotta say, I'm not sure I've ever really seen before, just maybe because we haven't caught it, is this other provider puts his hand underneath Bridgewater's pads and looks like he's actually trying to do something we call a sternal rub. This is something where you literally just take your knuckles and you rub it really hard on the sternum of somebody and it's basically a reliable way to see if somebody is truly unconscious. In the hospital, if you walk into somebody's room and you don't know if they're unconscious or if they're just sleeping, not responding to you, a sternal rub induces enough stimulation that's irritating that if the person isn't unconscious, they should at least open their eyes and perk up. So interesting, I don't know if I've ever seen this done, but it looks like they're trying to do a sternal rub here to see if they're able to tell if Bridgewater is in fact conscious or not. Once we ensure the athlete's not in cardiac arrest, we move on to that disability, the neurologic part of this. The first thing I'm gonna be asking the athlete is, can you feel your arms? Can you feel your legs? Do you feel numb, tingling anywhere? You're basically just asking them questions to get a sense of subjectively what they're experiencing. Now, if the athlete can't give you proper answers and they're still unconscious, you assume the worst and you just know you have to stabilize the spine. Then once they answer those questions, I'm gonna do just a gross motor screen. I'm gonna ask them to try to move their arms, move their legs, before I even go pushing on the neck and feeling for tenderness. After they do that gross motor screen, I'm checking cranial nerves, so moving the eyes up and down, smiling, looking for any dysfunction with the nerves, supplying the muscles and actions of the head and face. Then assuming those things are normal, I'm gonna palpate along the back of the spine, feeling for any tenderness. Again here, mainly looking for concerning fractures that could be causing injury to the spinal cord. If there's no tenderness, no other symptoms, I'm gonna have the athlete start to gently move their neck in different directions. If that's okay, then they can sit up. And so you gradually work through this process. And if at any point along the way they fail that assessment, you spine board them, you protect that cervical spine. The final piece of this is what to do about the equipment. And you'll get different opinions here, and a lot of it depends on the familiarity of the hospital system where you're practicing and just what that individual medical team chooses to do. Sometimes we take everything, the pads, the helmet, the face mask, take all of that off before they go to the hospital, and other times we leave most of it on. There were a lot of tweets out there about how Bridgewater specifically had his face mask off, and generally that's actually pretty standard precaution. If there is a spinal cord injury and it's high enough up in the neck, you can actually suppress the breathing mechanisms and alter the function of a nerve called the phrenic nerve, which actually supplies the diaphragm. Again, it's the heart rate, it's the breathing that's gonna kill you before the spinal cord injury, and so we need to make sure we can access the athlete's airway. If we need to put a breathing tube in, if you have a big face mask here in the way, it's gonna be really hard to do that, especially in an emergent situation, if somebody goes into cardiac arrest or crashes on the way to the hospital. 
So we will typically at least take off the face mask just so we can get access to the airway to ensure that that's accessible if the athlete does go downhill. So there's nothing about seeing the face mask off that makes this a more serious situation. It's just kind of standard protocol that we'll see done. Thankfully, we heard that Bridgewater was able to move his arms and his legs and was going to the hospital just out of precaution. The actual play itself certainly didn't look concerning for a typical neck or cervical spine injury. Usually those more often occur whenever there's some sort of axial load like a spear tackle. So if there's any sort of impact that comes in this way, kind of onto the top of the head, that's most often when we see fractures and spinal cord injuries. But again, even if the athlete's unconscious and you're concerned, you still treat it like there is one. Also, sometimes we can just have these transient temporary episodes, sort of like a stinger, but it affects both arms or both legs. There's a lot of times you get out there and the athlete is having some numbness, some tingling in both of their arms, but then by the time you kind of get them off the field, those transient symptoms start to resolve and they have normal function. It's also important to realize that there's not one specific protocol applied to every situation. These medical teams rehearse this on a weekly basis and so everyone's gonna have a little bit different process, a little bit different way they get the athlete on the backboard. You'll even read about places that say don't ever even put somebody on a backboard. So there's gonna be differences of opinion, but typically this is the standard approach that we'll go through when we have an athlete down on the field worried about a spinal cord injury. That's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.